All right, so the weekly UI prompt we are going to walk through today is a workout tracker. Um, and I'm going to do a, it for mobile, and I'm going to do a kind of like workout walkthrough or guide. So kind of like a workout app. Um, so let's start here. First thing on the page we'll want to include is a title for the workout. Um, we'll go to something basic, 30-minute core workout. It sounds straightforward enough, so we'll go with that. Um, I'm going to throw some rules on here for the edges to make sure that all our content lines up. And all right, so next is I'm going to add a placeholder here for some sort of image, maybe an image for the exercise we're supposed to be doing. Actually, I think maybe more importantly, if you're thinking about when you work out, you're, you're kind of counting down the seconds until you can be done with that exercise, especially if you're just on an app and following a guide. So I think I'm gonna make the most prominent thing on here, the timer. And so I'll do that here in the center and we'll add in a countdown here and we'll add in kind of like a, a progress, I guess, if you will. A visual indication of the, that countdown. So we'll say we have 25 seconds left, left in a 30 second exercise and if we're going to list out the exercises for this workout below we will um, I'm going to include this large box here for the exercise that is currently being done and we'll say it's a 30 second workout um, and then let's duplicate that and we'll make this box a little smaller so it's less prominent and we can have that be um, the list of exercises that are to follow. Um, so if we add in a time, or actually, yeah, let's stick with time. I was going to put in how many reps we should do, but let's stick with time so we're only working with one unit of measurement here and that way um, users know what to expect. They're expecting a time countdown for this. So we'll add in some other core workouts here too. Um, and we'll add in some designated rest time. And we'll treat that differently visually so that the user knows what to expect. And it's really obvious that that rest period is coming up. Give them a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel, I guess. At least I know I need that when I'm working out. Um, okay, so we'll duplicate that and we'll say like minute and a half, two minute intervals of workout and then rest and we'll just add some extra here so that we've got some runoff to show that this scrolls down the page. Um, okay, so let's see. I think that's good. Got a variety of exercises in there for core workout. Um, one thing that I do think would be nice is to, I guess let's actually look at the uh, typography first before we get into actually styling all of this. Let's do, I'm going to go with, let's go with Source Sans here, something neutral that doesn't introduce too much personality because our target audience is pretty broad for a workout app. We don't, we've got women and men, younger and older. Um, there's a lot of different demographics that get included in apps like this. So something's neutral that's not going to introduce too much personality and turn anybody off. Um, and then I'll add in this red for our primary color for the start of a color palette um, and then that lighter gray do something kind of bold and in your face for this workout video. Um, add some energy. We don't want to want to do anything too muted because this is kind of like a the intent of the app is to like motivate and kind of like empower and get in your face a little bit. So we want to go with a bolder color here. Um, and I'm going to play with how we visually highlight the current exercise. So I'm going to put it kind of in this card and make it add this drop shadow here that's a little more subtle. So I really want to let that red stand out. So I don't want to have too much 
else on the screen that's going to visually distract. So we'll add this red type face here in the subtle drop shadow and that'll help the uh, current exercise to stand out. Um, and then I'm going to treat the rest increments differently just so that they stand out even more than they were already, which they weren't anymore because we removed those borders on them. So I'm going to make them stand out again. And let's see, let's kind of draw those back with a lighter color here. We'll go a little gray and then maybe we'll add in this, these rules here to kind of visually break up the exercise list and say like this is literally a break in your workout. Let's play with that idea. Feels a little funny having those hang out there by themselves with that giant white space in the middle. So what if we do something with the rule kind of continuing through that? If I could grab my anchor points, here we go. Okay, so let's try to center that up a little bit more. I'm going to get rid of the guys on the outside because they're just kind of hanging out there and they feel a little funky. So I'm going to add that to both rest breaks here. That helps to visually break that up a little bit. I'm going to lighten the stroke so they aren't quite so heavy. Um, and then let's adjust that a little bit so it's not quite so large. And give a little bit more breathing space to everything up top here. Um, and we'll make the title stand out a little more with a heavier typeface and we can actually bring that font size down since we're increasing the font weight. Both of those increase the hierarchy on the page so if you use them both you have to be careful that you're not that it's not going to overpower the screen and make that to where that's the only thing the user wanna look, wants to look at when they look at the interface here. Okay, so adding in some navigation, we've got a back arrow to go with, um, to be allow users to exit out of the exercise. It'd be a little terrifying if you started an exercise and can't stop, both li literally and figuratively. That was an attempt at a bad joke. I'll stop. Um, okay, so we've got a menu icon in there in case there's other things you want to do in the app. And I'm actually going to, when I'm working through an exercise, I like to be able to see how the pro what the proper form looks like. And so I'm going to actually include an illustration here for what the exercise should look like to help guide users. Because you could have some inexperienced uh, users here as well who may not know exactly what a plank is or what the proper form is. Um, so I'm going to look here. I'm at Vecteasy, which is a free vector illustration site. And I want something that's pretty simple and clean, not a piece of wood. So let's go back to push up our search. Um, and let's see here. Kind of like these guys with the uh, the circle in the background, it's very simple, clean, just the silhouette so you're not getting too much into like an illustration style that's going to add too much personality to it because I want to keep this pretty clean and neutral like I said before. So I'll pull that in and if we open up our downloads here, I guess I got to unzip that first. Okay, let's go into our downloads, unzip. Let's open up this file here and let's go with the full side profile here and that really showcases what the exercise is supposed to look like. So we'll grab that one and looks like I messed up my view here. Let's get our, there we go, get our tabs back and we'll paste that over here. I'm going to grab the red for our circle background here. Um, and I'm just going to figure out a place to put this guy temporarily. It feels a little funny. Okay, we'll undo that. Now let's make our timer a little smaller. And let's drop in our illustration right below it. All right. Don't love it, but I'm going to work on the gradient here and we'll come back to the layout. So 
I want to add a gradient to the our reds here so specifically the timer right now and I want to do that because I want to add a little bit of interest to it and kind of give like this idea of motion since we're in a workout app um, and it's about moving so it's like introducing a visual idea of motion even if it's subtle um, is going to play into that and kind of reinforce why we're here so let's work through what these color stops should be so I've got a bright red and then I darkened the, it a little bit for our second stop. But it's not quite drastic, drastic enough. I'm going to try to brighten this up. That feels a little too vibrant. Let's, uh, that's turning salmon. That's weird. Okay, so let's maybe, let's undo. Not digging that. Okay, let's backtrack. Let's actually try to just darken this one up and leave our original where it was. Alright, so we've got our colors. Let's work on the stop here. We'll adjust that so that the brighter color is the majority of the fill. And let's play with this angle here. I want to try to get the brighter color up top. Is that simulates this idea of like light. I mean it goes with uh, with real life. You know light is coming from above usually. Um, so I want to keep that lighter color up top and let the darker color fade at the bottom kind of like a shadow. Um, so I think that is a good starting point for that. I'm going to add a pause button in here because thinking through um, using a workout video or a workout app or going through a workout um, if there's a timer and you need to stop for whatever reason whether it's you need rest or uh, your dog needs to go out or something I don't know your kids crying you gotta be able to pause and not completely lose your spot and so I want to add that in and let's add an outer glow to this timer as well to kind of give this uh kind of reinforce this idea of like movement or like vibrancy um you know, make it kind of look like it's pulsing a little bit all right so i think i like that um let's go with let's make this pause button a little smaller so it's not quite so prominent and now we'll go back to trying to figure out how to arrange these so that they feel like they're actually meant to be on the page and not just floating here. I think it's not really working. Okay, so let's try maybe if we bring the timer down onto the card, then we kind of lose this idea of the timer being really prominent because that's uh like user, when users are doing the workouts, they want to be able to see how much time is left on an exercise. Um, we lose that prominence there. So let's actually try to, let's change the shape of this and let's actually get it out of the circle. And let's do a linear timer. So if we pull this red here, oh, I forgot, let me change that to be a, fill. Okay, so let's change that to a stroke and let's move our timer below here. And let's see if we want to, I think I like that layout. That seems to be working. Okay, so let's move our button, our pause button. It feels a little funny hanging out there on the right like that with nothing on the left to balance it. And it feels a little too prominent in the red background when it's not like nested in that timer like it was. So let's actually change this to be an icon rather than the word. And we will adjust the spacing on that and then we'll put this in a circle. We'll group that those lines and then center that up. And then 
Let's actually add in the option now that I'm thinking about it as a user. If you're wanting to control the time, you want to be able to pause it or, so, or also reset the timer um, in case you had to walk away and you want to like come back to it and start over. I want to make that easier for users. So if we add in here a reset icon. Uh, let's see here line that up and we'll change those to a fill and merge them and then that way the gradient is smooth throughout it and we'll bump it down in size and that pause button feels too big since the I we did the icon in as a linear element element rather than inside of a container so let's actually reverse that out and make it so that the pause icon is also on its own and not held inside of a container So we'll center those up. And then we've got our illustration there. And let's see here, what do we want to do with this? I think, I think we're in a good spot. I think the next step is to start composing this into a, uh, into a dribble shot. So I'm going to put the container around here and make a clipping mask and then that way we can have our content stay together. I'll adjust the artboard size to dribbles recommended 1600 by 1200 um, and then let's start composing our shot. So I want to do something sticking with the idea of like this clean bold interface. I'm going to do kind of a simple composition here so I'm going to add in a background Make sure it's aligned on the artboard, and then I'm going to grab just grab this red here, and I'm going to actually make it the gradient, and we'll adjust our angle here to fall in line with what we were talking about earlier with the light being on top and dark on bottom. That kind of goes with how things are in the real world and nature. Um, and then I'm going to add this kind of dramatic drop shadow here to go along with that. Oh, when our angle got messed up there. Okay, so we'll reverse that. Oop, there it is. Okay. And now we're at it. Okay, so kind of at that diagonal there. Um, same diagonal as the shadow we've got going. And so that kind of just reinforces this idea of dimension, dimensional dimensionality that's a word, right? We'll go with it. Um, but we'll center it up, make sure it's centered on the artboard, and then um, I always bump it up just a smidge because um, with the shadow it gets a little bottom heavy. And there we have it. We've got our dribble shot and we've got our workout tracker. Um, thanks for hanging out. Let's do it again next week.